Florida man, the greatest state shaming device ever conceived. The mugshot, always a series of bad decisions puzzle. There's one, there's one. They always look like they just got released from an alien abduction, right? There's a defeated crazy look in the eyes, but a glint, a glint that says, if I get a chance, I'm gonna do that again. And that's how we get the Florida man stories that people love to recount to me. I read about the guy that was arrested for touching himself on a Ferris wheel in a chicken suit. Okay, first of all, it was a chicken mask. Second of all, it was a drawbridge. And third, and most importantly, that guy's from Buffalo. Yeah, he's Buffalo man, not Florida man. I'm Florida man. I'm a third generation native of this state. I have chewed tobacco while surfing, okay? I smoke my own mullet, boil my own peanuts, and I consider anything under a category four perfect parasailing weather. It seems a little windy. Get in the harness, lady, get in the harness. What about George Zimmerman? He's from Virginia. What about Casey Anthony, Danny? She's from Ohio. What about the basalt zombie guy that ate the homeless guy's face? He's from Haiti. They're all from somewhere else. For Christ's sakes, our Native Americans, the Seminole Indians, they're from Georgia. They're snowbirds. Yeah, I know what you're saying. I think they were running from something else. What they'll share on social media. Florida man arrested for having sex with an alligator. And then they comment, can you believe it? No, because there's an alligator involved. The only thing having sex with an alligator is another alligator. Let's say you get the alligator's consent. Who's gonna hold the tail? You just gonna flip an alligator over? Oh. What are you, a Brazilian jiu-jitsu master? But hey, come on down to Florida. Have sex with an alligator. Don't forget to film it. Someone will find that camera, eventually. Florida is the field of dreams for morons. We built it and they just keep coming. Waves of idiots. They fail up north. Everybody get in the car. Get in the car. It's gonna be all right. We're gonna go to Florida. We're gonna live on the beach. You're not gonna live anywhere near the beach. You're gonna be miles away, sweating and fighting cockroaches. We're gonna be beach bums. You got that half right. I don't know why they don't call me. I can tell you your future. Four weeks after you hit this state, you're gonna be at a crosswalk, right? Dirty tan, long pants, one flip-flop, ripped wife beater, trying to balance a 12-pack of natty light on a stolen 10-speed. That's your future, because you moved to a right-to-work state without a skill, you sad sack of stupid. There are two types of people that move to Florida, people that are running from winter and people that are running from the law. And those stories are always intertwined. You don't get one without the other. Right now, there's a beautiful old lady living up north. Right? She's getting ready to retire. Uh, she's tired of winter, probably not even tired of winter, probably tired of the ice scraper. It's 2019, our phones are smart, our TVs are smart, but if you want to get ice off a windshield, here's a stick me, Ma. Good luck with that. <laughs> How's that with the arthritis? <laughs> so she gathers the family together and tells them, I'm moving to Florida. And what do they say? You should take Eddie. Not out of the kindness of their heart. This isn't sympathy or empathy. This is a purge. They're trying to get rid of Eddie. Eddie's a problem. Eddie costs people money. Eddie's not unemployed. Eddie's unemployable. Eddie's got prison tats on his face and his first words were, Mama Smoke, that's Eddie. But she takes Eddie. Why? Because she's a good Nana. She even puts up with him for a couple of weeks, but she gets tired of being stolen from, kicks him to the curb. Now Eddie's alone on the streets of Florida. Goes on a meth bender, ends up naked in a McDonald's at night. Not in a threatening way, more in a, I need a Happy Meal and the approval of my father. But you can't see that on the grainy security video. All you see is this naked guy doing the helicopter. Yeah, now somebody slaps on a crazy headline. They add Eddie's mug shot, and then they start sharing it like it's family style. That video goes viral, and the whole country looks at us and says, Oh, Florida man. Florida man? That guy's from Cleveland. That's their school system, not ours. They're juking the stats. I love this guy, he's a regular at my comedy club in Vegas, and uh, he performs all over the country. He's a regular at MJ's on St. Pete Beach, the one and only Mr. Danny Bevins. Danny! Oh. 
Thank you very much. I had a set plan for you, but uh, uh, I'm going to change it up because I just realized that uh, Sunday is Mother's Day. Yeah. And, uh, and my mom is watching. Right? She's at home right now. She's watching this. And it's that's because it's past seven, you know? So she's like, oh, yeah, now I'm here. So I thought I'd talk some shit about her to keep her awake. I love my mother. My mother is great. My mother is Jesus' biggest fan. Yeah. Season ticket holder. I'm not fucking around. Yeah. I can't believe she doesn't show up to church in a jersey and face paint, you know? Just waving a foam crucifix. He's number one! He's number one! I think we're going all the way this year. He's number one! Yeah. She's a good Christian, too. Good. She's not the God hates gays Christian. She's the Jesus is like Elvis Christian, you know? Jesus, Elvis, right? You know that because when you walk into her house, there are two pictures, Jesus and Elvis. Yeah. That yeah, was a little confusing growing up because I'm like, hey, Ma, wh which one died for me? And which one died on the toilet? Yeah, seriously. Which one of these two hippies saved me? I gotta know. <laughs> my mother makes religion look good. She makes it look fun. My mother uses religion like a lot of us use weed, you know? <laughs> yeah, just to relax, feel better about herself, you know? Sing a few songs, right? <laughs> and she's not gonna force it on anybody. She just shared. You want some? You want some? <laughs> Are you sure you won't sleep better? You won't. All right, more for me, you know. She's good. Those people are good. It's the people who use religion like it's cocaine, right? The ones that, <laughs> send her, send her. Get out of my goddamn bathroom, send her. You know. People that walk around like they're God's hall monitors. I don't get your fucking name, you know. Right? Right. The ones that show up to church like they're, Showing up to jury duty, you know. Who do we get to? Who do we get to? Who's gonna be guilty? Guilty! I don't need no evidence. Guilty! Right. And I know where it comes from. It comes from not holding them down long enough during the baptism, right? You say, Are you sure you understood the Sermon on the Mount? <laughs> That's why so many Christians are okay with waterboarding, you know? Yeah. This is, this, this is, it's a lot like baptism. Yeah. Just saving the savages. My mother wouldn't do that. My mother would do that. Look, I, I'm going to cook some biscuits and gravy. When he smells that, he's going to tell you everything. <laughs> My mother loves singing competitions on TV. She loves sing. I don't call them sing. I call them sad story competitions. Because they only sing for like 30 seconds, but that sad story is a minute. Woe is me. A minute and a half. Why don't you just sing a fucking sad song and we'll infer the rest? How about that? And it's always a sad, it's never a good story. Nobody's ever, yeah, my parents love and support me. And um, I come from a good neighborhood and I had a great childhood and I have respect for myself and others. Yeah. Boo! Fucking fascist, right? Like, I'm not rooting for him. My favorite scene in the singing competitions, they do it. All of them do it. Every season, they have this one scene where they have the little girl come on stage, and the little girl comes on stage, and they're like, why are you sad? She's like, my Nana died. Guess what, motherfucker? That's what Nanas do, okay? Yeah. What music would you like us to cue up? Yeah. This is a singing competition, not who has the fewest relatives. Yeah. 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 That's right. That's right. A lot of people think you can substitute a sad story for talent, which is ridiculous, because if that was true, the Cleveland Browns would have won a Super Bowl by now. Right? Yeah. Yeah. The only competition show I can watch on TV is Chop. That's the only one, right? It's a cooking competition show, right? And they take these chefs 
right? It's for 10 grand, that's the prize. And they take the chefs and they give them these weird ingredients and they have a short period of time to make a meal, right? So they'll give them like, uh, you have uh, the ass of an otter, a wasp nest, and the saliva of an orphan, right? You got, you got 20 minutes, make me a dessert, right? I'm, I'm on the edge of my seat, like, is he gonna use strawberries, right? But what I love about Chop is that they have the sad story portion, right? They're, they have the sad, but the judges listen to the sad story and then they just disregard that shit <laughs> and base everything on the food. So you have moments like this, like, um, I'm here this week because um, my best friend, my aunt, she, she died and uh, she was 90. So at the end there, everything was killing her. And, uh, <laughs> And she's the one that taught me how to cook, you know? And so I'm here to show her that I'm gonna carry on. And the judges are like, oh, that's awful. You know what else is awful? This chum bucket you just laid in front of me. Yeah, yeah. Would you, would you season that with your tears? Is that what it was? Look, pack your shit and get the fuck out. You've been chopped, right? I come off my couch applauding like, yes! Yeah! 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 Finally, a meritocracy. I wish, I wish, because all the chefs on the show, they always say, I'm not here for the money, right? I wish they were there for the money and that was a part of their story. That's the one I want to see, right? Hey, Bob, why are you on Chop this week? Uh, why well, are these guys in South Boston 10 grand? And if I don't pay them by Friday, I'm fucking dead, okay? Wow. Mm. Sharpen your knives, Bob. This is a big day for you, isn't it? Mary, why are you here? <gasps> These people have our children, and if we don't give them money, I don't think we're gonna see Tommy and Katie again. Get your mise en place in place, Mary. Chad, how you doing, Chad? Oh man, everything is cool. I got a big dick in a trust fund. Life is good. <laughs> and everybody hates Chad. Chad's the villain. People are like, boo, Chad. They have hashtags, hashtag, fuck Chad, right? <laughs> but you know who wins? Chad, you know why? He knows how to cook fucking risotto. And that's all this is about. That's all it's about. <laughs> uh, uh, I get this question a lot. You ever get this? I get this question a lot. You know what your fucking problem is? And I do. Um, <laughs> I was induced at birth, which means that I was evicted from my first home. <laughs> Believe me when I tell you, not the last vagina I was asked to leave. <laughs> yeah. It was the last one I was physically removed from, I'll give you that. I'm just saying I've been tapped on the shoulder. What do you think of that, Ma? Love you. Good night. <laughs>